you have a an older Ford Motors Corporation vehicle, like a 1987 Ford Thunderbird or a Mercury Cougar or a Mustang that uses a second generation 75 or 65 amp alternator. If you have a vehicle that uses one of these types of alternators with a 75 or 65 amp output that has one of these types of plugs for the uh, output of the alternator and you want to convert it up to an alternator from let's say like a 95 Ford Motors Company vehicle with an you can't even see it with an output stud and 120 amp output then you might want to follow these instructions now I'm not actually going to take out this alternator because it's already in there and I don't have any of my tools out but I'll kind of walk you through the process basically the 65 or 75 amp second gen alternator and most of these third gen alternators will fit in and out of each other the casings are about the same size the bolt the distance between the two mounting bolts is the same so it should fit and you have this plug so that's kind of all you need uh, you will probably need to get a bolt that will fit through this unthreaded mounting bracket and the original mounting bracket that's on your board because the mounting bracket that's on the engine is not threaded and neither is the hole in the alternator but the second gens is threaded as you can see because the bolt is in there I do recommend that you use a locking washer and a nylon threaded nut to help keep it, keep this whole piece from vibrating loose and having the whole alternator come off which is not fun at all now I recommend you use 4 gauge or 0 gauge thick 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 wire going from the output stud of this alternator to wherever it is you're mounting it whether it be the starter solenoid or the battery which is what I did I ran it straight to the battery for now wiring needs to be done like this you have your old connector which you can just cut off and you have your S and your two outputs you need to take your two outputs cut them where they become two wires put a little twisty do on it and tuck it away somewhere for now and then just bolt it straight onto the uh, hot terminal of your battery and your ASI plug which would be this D-shaped plug you kind of just um, plug it back in but you need to make sure that your wires are correct with your S wire, your A wire, and your I wire and you have these two wires that go into the plug and the center wire that comes out you need to clip the center wire of these three wires and make a jump to the little plug right here and make sure that your A wire is still in the right spot and your I wire is still in the right, the right spot. Now to explain what these S, I, and A wires are, I have a little thing right here. The I terminal runs to the gen light, which is the alternator light, and it's typically green and red. So this is your I terminal wire which was in the middle and now it's off to the side. Your S terminal wire simply jumps over to the stator plug and it's typically typically white and black. Now here's the black wire but it's in this plug instead of this one so that's why I had to switch them. But I took the S wire which is this and just jumped it over to the stator. And then you have your A terminal which is your yellow which typically runs via fusible link to a 12 volt source. That's all you really need to do. I'm going to put links in the description of articles that I read to help me get through this installation process and which will help you get through this installation process. 
and it also has wiring diagrams to kind of explain further how these wires are laid out so you can further understand if this video didn't give you enough information. You may have to take a grinding wheel to grind down this metal casing a little bit because on the bottom where it mounts into this hole underneath here, or actually more like up in here, it was contacting with the bracket and wouldn't sit all the way down like it should. So I had to take a grinder wheel and grind off part of the metal casing. And from the front, it doesn't even look like it's um, an aftermarket part. Even though it really isn't, it's still a stock Ford part, it's just not the stock, the stock part that came out of this car. But um, thank you for watching, I hope this helped. And subscribe, and thumbs up.